Good evening in Kuwait time and good morning in your time. Uh, today we have uh, one of the sessions that uh, the Kuwait Bar Association has a vision to uh, overcome obstacles for Kuwaiti law lawyers, not to be as only national lawyers, but to be uh, a worldwide lawyer and to continue their education. Today we have from Boston University, Maureen Leo, Welcome to this uh, meeting. Thank you for your time. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for coming. And thank you uh, to the Kuwaiti Bar Association for the opportunity to get a chance to speak with you about LLM study in the United States and particularly at Boston University. I have some slides uh, to present today that gives you an overview of our program but really welcome any questions you might have. So I understand that if you have any questions, you can type them in the chat or otherwise let us know and I'd be happy to kind of speak to people directly in whatever way is most useful to you. My name is Maureen Leo. I'm the director of the graduate and international programs here at Boston University School of Law. Boston University School of Law is located in the intellectual capital of the United States if not the world. Uh, we have over uh, 200,000 students who come every year to study in Boston. We have an enormous intellectual cultural life here. I think you'll also find that it's safe, it's walkable, it's historic as America started here. And it's really an ideal place to meet young talented uh, learners from around the world. Within Boston University itself, we have a number of different LLM programs. Our largest program is the American Law Program. That gives a general overview of American law. There are over 200 courses to choose from in that program and only two required courses. So you have terrific, terrific curricular flexibility in that program. You can also choose to take classes that are LLM specific or with the JD program. So you really get a lot of different options. We also have specialized LLM programs, and those are in intellectual property and graduate tax, as well as in banking and financial services. For those students who have the resources or the ability to stay for two years, who also want some additional English support prior to beginning their LLM study, we have a two-year LLM program, which includes a legal English certificate program. So your first year of study, you're primarily focused on legal English. And then your second year of study, you specialize either in one of our specialized LLM programs or in uh, our general American law program. You are automatically considered for merit-based scholarships if you apply to Boston University. You do not need to present any additional paperwork to be considered. We give scholarship awards based on merit, not need. So the admissions committee, if you apply to us and we review your application. We select some candidates for interviews. We will interview you, get a sense of who you are, whether get an understanding of whether you're a good fit for us or we're a good fit for you. And then if you are admitted to the university, you will find out about your admission along with any scholarship award at the time of your admission. So let me tell you a little bit if I can about, if I could advance this slide, about kind of where we are within the United States, States itself. I know many of you are probably familiar, excuse me, I'm turning, plugging down my window here so you don't hear the background noise. That's no, okay, just Maureen, uh, sorry to cut yeah. you off. Uh, yeah. We want to ask, uh, I have a question here from somebody, they're asking, uh, is it gonna be um, in person or can they do it online? Good question. So it's both, it depends on the program in which you're enrolled. So if you are enrolled in tax or banking, then you can take it in an online modality. If you are enrolled in the American law program and in the intellectual law program, then it's an in-person program. And it's going to be a, a full academic year. Not They can have it in a summer course or it has to be a full academic year from September till May. Academic year. However, it doesn't have to be September through May. It could be from January to January. So we can oh. do a fall start or a spring start, depending on students' matriculation needs. Tax also does this, does a summer intake as well. But in American law of banking, we matriculate students either in the fall or in the spring. 
I see. Thank you for clarifying because something this is something new to us. It's from January to January. Yeah. Yeah. Most students will start in September. So they'll come in September. We're getting ready to welcome a class of about 160 American law students. And our orientation begins on August 29th. We get them really busy um, and we try to teach them everything that we can within a week's time to get them positioned to succeed in American law school because it's so different than around in other different parts yes. of the world. Yeah. And the American law program, we have students representing over 40 different countries. So everyone comes with Wonderful. their own cultural context. And so it's important to get everybody kind of on the same page as how things are done in the U.S. That's wonderful. I'm sorry to cut you off. You may continue. All right. So it's nice to talk about where we're located. If you haven't been to the United States before, it is a big, wide country with so much to see. Boston University is right here in the northeast corner of the United States. Again, I mentioned America started here. This is where the revolution began. And we're one of the oldest, most historic cities in the United States. But we're nestled right here in the northeast corner. We have very easy access to New York City. You can get to New York in three and a half hours by car or bus or train. We also have very easy access to Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, and all of our cities on the East Coast. Boston hosts a major international airport, and you'll find that flights in uh, up and down the East Seaboard are incredibly inexpensive and easy to get around the country, because you'll certainly want to explore not only Boston, but hopefully get to see a bit of the United States while you're here as well. As to Boston itself, it's considered the academic capital of the world. We have over 60 colleges and universities that are here. We're also consistently rated as the number one place in the country for international students to study, just because the culture is so rich with intellectual curiosity and learning. You will find Boston itself to be absolutely Beautiful. I recently traveled around the United States a fair bit as my eldest son is approaching his college years and we were touring colleges in different cities in the United States. And I was reminded once again of just how special Boston is. It's safe. It's beautiful. It's historic. It's just a really nice place to live. Many places in the United States as well, you need a car to get around. Uh, you don't need a car in Boston. Everything is accessible by foot or by bicycle or by bus. It's a very comfortable place to be. It's also absolutely beautiful. You'll see brownstone streets um, with cobblestones. A picture here is our state house, a hat shell with outdoor music and venues. Uh, pictured in the middle slide is the, the Fenway Park. If anyone likes baseball, Bostonians are crazy about professional sports. And Fenway Park is our baseball stadium that's just a few blocks from campus. We also have many, many art museums and much culture to enjoy. I often think Boston has just a lot of the richness and depth of some of our larger cities in the United States without a lot of the problems. We can enjoy all these rich cultural and historic venues without dealing with a lot of big city problems like some cities have with higher crime rates or that kind of things. Our students feel safe in Boston. Yeah, they and also... that's uh, wonderful that that's the the scenery and the culture. I have also a question considering yeah. that. Uh, the uh, the question uh, considers um, uh, is is there a dorm on campus or is there family accommodations? Uh, how do students um like get accommodated in uh, Boston? Is it on, on camp or can they have rent a flat outside and they come to camp? It's gonna near. It's gonna be near you know, the problems that they face? Yeah, well, you don't face any problems alone. Uh, we have a housing office as well as our Office of Graduate and International Programs has great resources for students to find housing. We do have graduate student housing on campus. Most of our students prefer to live off campus because it's convenient. They get an easy kitchen. Many of our students like to cook for some of their meals because it saves saves some money and also is healthy. You might have seen the American diet is sometimes not the healthiest on the earth. And a lot of students like getting to have some food from their own cultures that they cook in, in kitchens and flats nearby. Because Boston has so many students, there are so many student apartment options. There's many options for students to live in all different price points. So we have very, very fancy accommodations, some of our very fancy parts of the city. A, a wide variety of resources 
and choice is available to students. Yes, that's clear because they were worried about the accommodation. Yeah, no, I think it's a good worry. I mean, the thing that I think is nice about our office and Boston University in particular is that all of us who've worked here have all had the experience of having lived and studied abroad. So I studied in Belgium. So I went to Belgium when I was 19 and tried to like figure it out. <laughs> My colleague is from Thailand. Another one lived for a long time in Switzerland and in Germany and France. So we've all had international experience and know what it's like to go to a new culture and a yes. new country and find housing and, a, and the culturation issues that follow. So you'll find, I think, a very supportive environment to explore this really exciting chapter and adventure in your life. That's excellent. So if they're going to enroll in uh, Boston University, there's a, a housing office that connect uh, they can get it's it's with the with the university, right? The housing office. We have uh, in our Office of Graduate International Programs, we offer housing resources for our students. There's a whole website that's directed to it. There's a university housing office that runs graduate student housing. And then our website has materials on how to access off-campus housing. So there's lots of resources available. But as That's I said, great. because we have so many students, it's such a turnover. September 1st every year, half the city moves out and half the city moves in. Yes. <laughs> we get so many students coming in and out. So that's that's covered. Thank you. Uh, let's continue. All right. All right. So you're looking at some slides here of our four seasons in Boston. And in Boston, you'll get all of them. They say if you don't like the weather in Boston, wait 15 minutes because it will change. And it does. So we have wonderful winters where our students and for some of our students, it's their first time experiencing a real winter that's cold and fresh. And so we go ice skating as a program. We're going snow tubing as a program this year for the first time. You know, you got to get a warm, heavy coat and enjoy the outdoors. Even in the winter, we love it. Uh, fall is coming up in September and October. It is the most beautiful time of year, uh, probably anywhere on earth. People from all over the world come to see the fall in New England. It is, the weather is literally perfect. Our program goes apple picking and we enjoy kind of the outdoor venues. We also celebrate American Thanksgiving together as our LLM program because so many students, it's their first Thanksgiving in the United States. And Thanksgiving, for those who don't know, is an iconic American holiday where families gather together and give thanks. And so we do that as a program. You take your international international introduction to American law final, and immediately after final exam, you go off to this great dinner celebration. We also have summer, which we're in right now. We're enjoying it very much. We have beaches and mountains very close to the city. And spring is a time that you'll study a whole lot. Uh, but when you're not studying, you'll also get out to enjoy the flowers and the leaves and the rich, uh, rich environment that surrounds the city. Uh, Boston University itself has more than 17 different colleges and universities. We have more than 33,000 students that from over 130 countries. And then what's interesting to me is that of our 33,000 student population, over 9,000 of our students are from different parts all around the world. Uh, we have over 300,000 living alumni uh, in all parts of the earth. Uh, with these uncertain times that we've lived in through COVID, it's really helpful to go to an institution that has a strong international footprint. Last summer, we had no idea if anyone was going to get to campus. Uh, American embassies were closed all over the world, and we, the world was still upside down from COVID. And yet our International Student Scholars Office is ex truly experts at what they do. And if there's a way, way to get people here to the United States, they will find a way <laughs> to get you here. So uh, we had a fully enrolled class. We had almost only, only eight of our 180 students last year did not attend in person because they elected to take um, their program from abroad. Last year, because of COVID, we offered an online option in the fall. But frankly, the experience is so much richer and better to come to the country for a year. It's such an improvement in language skills and culture and really getting into the life of the institution that our students really can and should be on campus. And that's how we run the program. Is the online uh, option still available? Online option is available for attacks as well as for banking. Yeah. American Law and IP is full residential experience. I see. Yeah. Okay. So Boston University, global research institution. You'll see two of our famous alums, Eli Wiesel, who is a prolific writer about the Holocaust. He himself survived Auschwitz. 
Martin Luther King as a civil rights leader, who really was the architect of the civil rights movement in the United States. He received his PhD from Boston University in 1955. And in 1955, unfortunately, it was not a place where a black men often received PhDs. The educational institutions were closed to so many of talented brothers and sisters of color, but not at Boston University. Boston University has admitted and enrolled students regardless of race, gender, religion since our founding. And it's a terrific commitment we have to diversity. We don't just kind of allow diversity, we welcome and celebrate it. It makes us better. As a result of that, the university has thrived. It has been in existence since 1839. We've had more than 13 Pulitzer Prize winners, seven Nobel Prize recipients. It's consistently ranked as a leading global research institution because of our footprint and our breadth. Wow, you'll that's also find great information. Uh, yeah, oh, it's important, I think, particularly as an international student as well. You want to go to both a city and an institution that values the diversity that you will bring, yeah, and, and welcomes you as as a foreigner. Absolutely, absolutely, and some parts of America, sadly, I think, are friendlier to foreigners than others are. We're in a time of reckoning in the United States. It's right around now. the world, not not only in the U.S. But when you get like a welcoming and a warm uh, welcome and uh, the students come part come uh, like a second family, that's the college uh, becomes your second home. So Absolutely. it's more, uh, it takes, it's like an advantage to the college and welcoming to the student. 100%, 100%. Everyone is better for it. And these slides kind of depict some of that. So you'll see here, <laughs> you'll see here at the bottom right, you'll see Jack Berman, who's in a BU sweatshirt, who is arms out stretched. Now, this is an erudite professor of constitutional law, a formal, a formal law clerk to the United States Supreme Court, like truly uh, uh, unbelievable academic credentials. But he loves students, as do our faculty, and he'll go ice skating with students. Um, we have uh, pictured here a service trip for students who do community service in the community. There are some students in the upper left who are um, lending themselves in solidarity. They shaved off their heads to raise money for a fellow student who was afflicted with cancer who was fighting that disease. The top right is my favorite picture because if you look really closely, you'll see me in the center as well as four little kids. It was when my four little kids, my children were younger and every year we had our students to our home uh, for Thanksgiving celebration. Our program got too big, so now we do it off site, but uh, it's a wonderful opportunity, I think, to connect with students. And you'll find that our faculty and staff is committed to your experience, not just as institution members of our institution, but as you say, as a part of our family. Yes. Boston University, by the numbers, top 11% in the world. Uh, we're always consistently ranked as having uh, the best professors in the country as ranked by the Princeton Review. And that ranking is done by students in the United States. They're asked by a magazine publisher to rank their faculty. And the Boston University always ranks at the top 10 of that faculty ranking. Um, if you like to watch television, I often get a question like, how can I prepare for my LLM study? Well, you might want to see some shows written by David Kelly. He is a graduate of Boston University School of Law. He also married Michelle Pfeiffer, but he wrote some pretty funny um, legal shows called Practice Boston Legal and Ally McBeal. They're silly, but they do give a nice view of Boston as a city. And you can practice your English and not feel guilty about it as long as you're watching them in English. Uh, you'll find, though, I hope, uh, as John Young did, she was our commencement speaker from 2013, that this was the best year of her life. We expect that to be our students' experience. We work very hard that that's materialized. And if we both do our jobs, this should be a transformative year of your life in all dimensions, uh, academic, social, cultural. This should be a profound year of change. Uh, on all dimensions. And it is an extraordinary time of life. It's a real honor to be a part of it every year for our students. You'll find here some of our first, we talk about uh, our commitment to diversity and inclusion. You'll see some of our prominent graduates here. Edward Brooke, the first African-American popularly elected to the United States Senate. He was a graduate again, 1948. Barbara Jordan, again, African-Americans, Southern African-American uh, elected to the United States House of Representatives, graduated 1959. This commitment to diversity is just who we are as an institution. It's not something that's new for us. We have many firsts. We were one of the first law schools to actively recruit female students. Uh, we were also one of the first 
universities to have a specialized LLM program in tax and another in banking. And we were also one of the first law schools to offer clinical and experiential learning. So we try to stay on the forefront of what is ahead to get our students ahead. And we've done that consistently. We've done that through the guidance and expertise of our faculty, uh, top rated faculty in the United States. They're all area diet professors. They all publish widely. They write scholarly articles. They're well known in their field. What makes them unique, I think, is they don't get a job at BU unless they actually like students. And so being a professor and liking students, being a good writer and being able to teach, these are different skill sets. <laughs> Sometimes they don't correlate. Sometimes uh, you can be a very renowned professor, but really generally not enjoy having students in the classroom in front of you. Those people just don't get hired here. Our dean doesn't have any tolerance for it. And uh, our faculty you'll find very accessible, brilliant, but also accessible in and out of the classroom. What does the classroom look like? Well, here's a view. We have a totally renovated facility. It was rebuilt within the last five years. You'll see state-of-the-art classrooms that are wired for technology. So if you are unable to make it to class because you are ill or life circumstances render you unable to come to class, you can ask your professor to record it and view the recording. You'll see the university itself is, uh, the law school itself is surrounded with light, airy spaces, common study rooms. We're trying to build community at all times in the law school, and that happens with some of our public spaces on campus, as well as the quality of the classrooms to make it a comfortable place to learn. Here are some of our graduates. We have over 40,000 alumni throughout the world. They are industry leaders on every continent on earth. They've had terrific careers. There are way too many to highlight. I'm always hesitant to even show any of these slides because there's so many that I could highlight. Where you'll find Boston University itself is right on something called the Esplanade. The Esplanade is a public park in Boston. You can see it it's like a pathway, a sidewalk that goes about 20 kilometers around the city. It goes across the river to Cambridge and MIT, and it goes downtown, and it's all a quick bike ride away. So myself, every season, uh, rain, snow, shine, cold weather, hot weather, I get off the train, I hop on a rented bicycle that are all over the city, and I drive down on this sidewalk path looking at the skyline approaching Boston University. You'll it's find lovely. it to be... It's beautiful. So even though we're in a big city, it feels like we've got a natural environment just because we're surrounded by the river and this beautiful, beautiful park called the Esplanade. Uh, so our LLM programs, it's American Law, Banking, Tax, IP, and then our two-year LLM program. You talk a little bit about each one in particular. American Law is our most flexible. You can pretty much choose your individual learning plan. You will meet with an academic advisor before you register for classes. Why will you do that? Well, this is a question at this time of year I ask myself every day because I meet with students nonstop over the summer. Why? Because we meet with every student individually to discuss who you are, what you want, and what classes are the best fit for you. Some of you will want to take the bar exam. Some of you will want to take uh, it, go into an international business practice concentration or another academic focus. It's important to know who you are as a learner so we can help identify what courses are best for you. It would be easier for us as a program if students just registered on a computer. That would be easier, but we don't do that. We speak with every student individually. It's a big part of who we are, and it gives, the, I think, the best experience for students. Some of you will want to take the bar exam. If you do want to take a U.S. bar exam, we have a particular specialized curriculum that was developed to try to identify courses that were particularly hard to learn on your own in the summer and give you a jump start on your bar study during your LLM program. Uh, I have a question just yeah. before we continue. Um, they're asking if there's a JSD program in Boston. There, yeah, there isn't a JSD program in Boston University, but I think that's actually to an advantage. We've had many, many students go on to do an SJD. What students do typically is they come to Boston University, they get their LLM degree first, and then during the time of their LLM, they identify a potential topic or area of research or interest with our faculty, and then they apply to SJD programs. I think it's an advantage personally to go to separate institutions for both because you can inherit 
and alumni network from two different institutions. So you double your contacts. So you can come to Boston, inherit Boston University's alumni network, get Boston University on your resume, which has international prominence, and live in Boston. And then for your SJD program, you might then want to go to another part of the country, or you might want to go to another institution, then inherit their alumni base. So instead of spending many years in one location in the United States or one institution, you could diversify your experience. The United States is big and very different. The South feels so different than the Northeast does. The Northeast feels so different than California. So if you have a chance to live in different parts of the country, I think it's definitely to anyone's advantage to do so. Yes, I agree with you. Yeah. But some uh, students so, get when they get, get when they get used to so, uh, a place or a university, they want to continue in the same place because they feel comfortable. Their comfort zone. Yeah. They don't want to go around. I agree, and I understand that. I think that that is perfectly valid. And if that's who you are, then you know certainly looking at it, a school that would give an SJD program, NLM might be a better fit for you. For me, I think if you have the courage to like kind of step out of your comfort zone, leave Kuwait, go to the United States to study, then maximize that opportunity. Maybe you want to do your SJD in the United States. Maybe you want to do it in Australia or the UK. You know, as many experiences you can get with as much a network as you could build for yourself, uh, both on the academic front as well as the personal networking, you know, the better you will be to bring to your next experience. And it's yes, so exciting. I agree. Totally. Yeah. Uh, so moving to banking and financial law, a smaller program, about 40 students. Specialization is in banking and financial law. So it's perfect if that's your primary interest area. And it's a specialized one, the oldest in the country and one of the oldest banking and financial law programs in the country. It's taught by over 40 faculty members, most of whom are in the industry. Uh, unbelievably practice focused program specialized and terrific. We also offer a 12 credit standalone financial services compliance certificate that's offered for students who don't want an entire LLM, but want a specialization. And we have this in both online or, or, um, or residential. We also offer that on a full or part-time basis. The intellectual property LLM program is really sits to the heart of our strengths here in Boston. This is an innovation hub. Boston University, MIT, Harvard, we're all five minutes from each other. There are a lot of smart people in Boston and they are doing a lot of really interesting things. When they have ideas, they need to be patented. They need to be protected for intellectual property. So this is a real uh, heart of academic life at Boston University and in Boston. So if you have an interest in intellectual property, we have a specialized LLM program in that space as well. We also have an LLM in taxation, one of the oldest in the country. And uh, it's one of the most respected as well. We were founded in 1959 and have served continuously since that time. Our students end up doing very well. Many, many go to big, big four accounting firms to work in house or at, or at other firms. And again, over 40 courses spanning many different parts of tax. This is only good for students who love tax. <laughs> if you want to exclusively focus on tax, this is an amazing program. If uh, your interests kind of are, are interested in tax and other fields, then the American Law Program offers a specialization in tax, but more curricular flexibility. I'll tell curricular. you. I'll tell you just some, something about Kuwait. We don't have taxes. You don't. Well, can yeah. we all move to ta Kuwait? Yeah, and that, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what? But one thing is, is uh, if somebody takes this program, they can uh, start it here at Kuwait University, or they can teach it in uh, for lawyers, and we get a good glimpse. We know about taxes. We have studied yeah. them in, at college, but we don't yeah. have taxes in uh, for living in Kuwait. It's amazing. You know, honestly, it's one of the things I love about my job because I learn these random things every day. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. It's really fascinating. Well, the tax structure in the United States is very complex. So if you have an interest in teaching or something, somehow intersecting with American tax law, taxes, the LM taxes may be a good fit. Yes. Uh, this goes on to the two-year certificate program. If you understood this conversation up till now, you don't need two years. Your English is sufficient to do the program. But for students who can st extend their stay, more language is always better. So it's an opportunity to deepen your language skills within the first year and then apply them to the substantive LLM program. In second. Those, those are just for uh, as an English language or as legal terminology? 
legal English. Legal, legal English. English. And uh, do you need uh, for uh, the enrollment and registration, you need any TOEFL, SAT, or ILETS? Yeah. So the TOEFL for American for Boston University is apparently 100 as a benchmark or a 7 on the ILTS. We have admitted students with lower than that if they otherwise have a strong academic profile, and then uh, we interview them. And those of us who do the interviewing for the program have done it for a long time. So I, I could generally assess uh, during the interview if someone's English is, is to the level that they could succeed in the program. We also do individual advising because we want to make sure students are in the right level classes for their particular confidence level in English. So yes, IELTS or TOEFL is important to us as a benchmark, but it's not dispositive. I once had a Swiss candidate who had a 64 TOEFL, which is truly a terrible TOEFL score. But he was a, a, an incredible candidate from Switzerland with a major career at a major law firm in Switzerland. It didn't make any sense. So I interviewed him just to meet him, to, to <laughs> what, what was going on with the TOEFL. And it turns out he was busy in practice. He didn't study for the TOEFL. He bombed the test. So I was glad to talk to him because his English was fine. He ended up being a star of the program. So it's important to us, but we look at the entirety of the application. Yes, that's that's true. Mostly, you know, most most uh, lawyers here, they speak different languages like French, yeah. English, Spanish, but they're not good at the legal terminology. They yeah. can do the TOEFL, right? It's, it's a start. Yeah. Like, it's a start. You know, you know how to speak the language. You know how to read uh, the language and write even but you know even in uh, in arabic you need to know the legal terminology it's different from like to execute in is like for for the judgment and to execute in the normal uh, english is so different yes yeah, yeah that, that's something we learned by practice absolutely yeah we have specialized courses and i think with students we have academic support workshops where we identify some gaps and that could be for legal terminology. And students will find at the law school, they do so much reading that just an old fashioned notebook where you write down the words that you don't know and look them up. You know, it's it's always exciting to see how uh, even very solid English speakers, how how much their vocabulary expands over the course of their year. And do so. you give uh, legal terminology as a program, even though they don't want to do their LLM? And yes. Boston? Yeah, they can come for one year for legal English to get a legal English certificate. So they can mm -hmm. study one year just to get legal English. If they don't want to do the entire LOM, they don't have to. And then we also have a, on the university level, we have a center for English language. And that is not specific to law necessarily, but it offers a wide variety of kind of courses and other areas to improve one's English outside of the law. Thanks. That's, that made things more clearer. All right. Wonderful. Um, so I highlighted here yet some more amazing graduates. There are so many who've done so many amazing things. But here's uh, some of them. Hashina Rahman is a Fulbright scholar who had come to us as a student. She's now actually teaching in our program. She unfortunately kind of was subjected to some of the chaos in Afghanistan she was able to get out of Afghanistan and she's now working as a faculty member at the law school. So once you're kind of part of the law school, you're always part of the law school, regardless of where in the world you may happen, happen to land. Um, you know, I mentioned a little bit, but we've got lots of sources for academic support. We have writing coaches. Our library staff is amazing. You'll find your professors to be accessible. We also have citation coaches and teaching assistants. I run an academic support workshop series throughout the semester where we teach various legal competencies and skills for our students. So lots of support inside and outside of the classroom. Speaking of outside the classroom, this is an important part of your year. You should have a lot of fun while you're here. It's a happy students are, are more successful students. It's important to connect with each other. The friends you make next year aren't just your friends. These are your international colleagues. This is your professional network when you graduate. So you can see our students at a lobster dinner at the Red Sox at a Celtics game. You can see students playing in the snow for the first time. Some had never seen the snow before. So we offer a lot of social events. These are purposeful because not only are we trying to just kind of help and improve the general well-being of our class, 
We also want our students to be close to each other because we want to build our alumni network throughout the world. You'll also find that students can join more than 30 different student organizations. This is a group of students that I took to Washington, D.C. They're on the steps of the Supreme Court. I take students every year to both Washington, D.C. and Philadelphia. It's one thing to study about the Constitution. It's another thing to be where they ratified the Constitution. So it's super, uh, it's an awesome opportunity to kind of get in and engage with the law outside of the classroom. We also run every year a discovery series where we take students to judges, chambers, corporations, and law firms so that they also can see how law is practiced in real time. Uh, we also have a professional development office. This is important for students so that they can get really practical skills on networking, interviewing, cover letters, and how to access the US legal market. How we interact with each other culturally is so different around the world. And so every year we offer in the fall a professional skills lab where we hire an etiquette consultant who comes in to teach students how to intersect with Americans. This is different. Our cultural norms are different. Do you shake hands? Do you bow? How do you hold a cup and a plate and say hello to someone? How do you start a conversation? How do you end a conversation? These kind of soft networking skills are incredibly important. We teach them to you as soon as you arrive. So you can hopefully use those skills and go out and build a network within the United States to get yourself a wide a range of contacts when you graduate. Uh, finally, just two more slides here. Uh, BU Law family is, you know, I said that we are 40,000. I misspoke. We're 24,000 alumni of Boston University School of Law. You will find us and we will find you. I was just in France this summer with my family, but you know, I took a night off and met some of our prospective students and our alums. It's always good to get together. We travel on the road to meet our, our alumni and prospective students, and they come back to us. Most importantly, they help each other. And so we have a robust alumni network where once you're part of BU, you're kind of always part of BU, and that's an incredibly powerful alumni network to tap into. And these are some of our alums pictured on their graduation day. Every year at, in May, the, the university puts on a commencement ceremony and this is a culmination of the students' experience at their time here. It is truly a privilege to walk this path with our students every year. It is a joy and an honor to do so. And you know, I applaud anyone to even learn about our university. The fact that you're kind of listening in today means that you've got a curiosity about what might come. And if you'd like to speak about, to me about our programs at any time, don't hesitate to reach out. We're always happy to answer questions and try to help you find the next best shot and best opportunity to fulfill your academic and professional goals. So I really appreciate the opportunity to speak, to speak with and present today. Um, and we're happy to continue the conversation. Thank you, thank you. Thanks a lot, Maureen. I have one question that has yeah. been sent to me. They're saying, how much does it cost um, for the fees to enroll for the program? And is there, um, what do you call it, uh, a, a, a for, uh, application form? Yeah. Uh, and there's yeah. a fees for the application form. And do you need a recommendation to be with your CV? What what are the documents that need to be uh, presented according, yes. accordingly with the form? That's a good question. I don't know why that slide didn't pop up, but I'm glad that they've asked the question. So hold on one second, because uh, let, me, let me share the correct screen here. Hold on a second. I think everyone's seen okay. my calendar, which looks abysmal, I must say. <laughs> here we go. So uh, the application uh, is, it's a straightforward application. And hopefully you can see what I'm seeing here. Hold on one second from current slide. And hold on, I'm going to share. I'm sorry Let's for the take your time. No, take your time. There we go. I'm going right here to two. Perfect. Um, so applicants are you know easy to apply. Uh, if you've come and you've listened to this presentation, you have done due diligence. We'd like to honor that. Feel free oh. to email us for an application fee waiver. We're happy to waive your $75 fee or whatever it is. Go spend it on something that means more to you. We appreciate the time that you've spent to learn about our program, and we're happy to waive your application fee. Uh, generally, for the application, you need to submit an application. It includes a resume as well as your uh, a personal statement. The personal statement should be kind of focused. Why do you like BU? How are you a good fit for us? 
how might, how might we be a good fit for you? Uh, you also need to include transcripts that goes through the LSAC application process and two letters of recommendation. The letters of recommendation should be people who know you well. I, we don't care necessarily who's the fanciest professor in your law school that you attended or who's the most prestigious partner you've worked with. Tell us, uh, find a letter from someone who knows you well, who can speak to your strengths as a candidate and as an employee. Um, I, we mentioned before the TOEFL scores, our target is seven and 100 but apply uh, if you're interested and you feel like the scores don't reflect your competence. Uh, viable candidates will interview with us. We wanna know who's coming in, who's interested in us. And so we will do that by an interview. Um, the actual admission kind of details. So the spring program, we have a spring start date and the application is due by Halloween in the United States, October 31st. Uh, for summer, we offer a summer start in taxation and well as estate planning and that application is the end of April. Most of our students will, will matriculate in, this, in the fall. So we're getting ready to welcome 140 students next month. And that application is due by April 15th of the year before you seek to attend. As for tuition, it's too expensive. We wish it, I wish it were cheaper. It's just study, it's, diff, it's um, expensive to study in the United States. Um, our tuition is generally around 70,000 inclusive, but let me get you the exact number. Most students, um, most qualified students can uh, apply, you be considered for scholarship assistance. And when you are, then um, a scholarship award is given at the time of your admission. So we try to stay competitive with the market where the cheapest tuition at any private law school at our rank or above. But I'm just looking up tuition here just because it recently changed and I don't want to give inaccurate information. So I will look that up and I will send it to you. I will kind of post that now. Okay, so here um, on my screen, you're going to see a slide, a, a web page about what our current expenses, what our degree, what tuition is. Hold on. Here we go. All right, so you'll see tuition, the base price 61,000, and then there are other fees of what you should budget for. Living expenses, room and board, transportation costs, personal expenses, books and fees. So, um, but again, like most qualified students, you know, can expect to hopefully get some off that from the tuition cost and scholarship, but it is expensive to study in the US. There's no question about it. That said, I think most students find that this investment pays off relative to the length of their career. But I, as a mother of four, believe me, I wish it were cheaper myself. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but just, uh, just it's just to get a quick uh, glimpse of, like, uh, to bear in mind how much they're going to spend. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, more an than that, because mostly, yeah, it's an investment. But mostly uh, the people who want to continue their education are practicing lawyers or in-house lawyers. So they need the, to take a time off and come attend and see how, their budget. Yeah, so it's, it's an important. Yeah, it's an important point to just bring it up. And, and I would say too, as a practical tip, I'm sorry to interrupt, but as a practical tip, if you apply to Boston University or any place else, don't hesitate to ask about money. A lot of people don't want to ask about money because they think it's tacky. You know, it's an important question. No, it's, uh, yeah, it's important to ask how much it's going to cost. How much, how is your budget going to be in the next few yeah. years? So, yeah. yeah. So just to bear in mind, uh, it's a good, it, as you said, it's a good investment and we need to know how to tackle things. Absolutely. And that's that uh, covers it all. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Maureen, for your time. I know we've been like uh, planning for this over the last past uh, two or three weeks. Yeah. And yeah. it's it's wonderful. It's been enriching. Uh, I'll uh, post this on YouTube and our social media. So for the students and uh, sorry, for the lawyers who want to continue their education at Boston University. Uh, it's uh, been a great time meeting you, even though it's in virtually. Uh, hopefully we'll meet in person. Would love that. And in the meantime, again, our thanks. It's such a privilege to be able to meet you and to speak with some of your colleagues and members of your organization. I wish you the very best and look Thank forward you. to hopefully talking to some people who may be interested in exploring life in Boston. Yes, my pleasure. So hope to see you soon. And thank you again. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.